Welcome to Shoujo and Tell, where we discuss shoujo manga and tell who's hot and who's not, talk about themes, and just generally geek out. Today, May 25th, 2020, will be Shoujo and Telling about the first nine volumes of Haruka, Beyond the Stream of Time, by Toko Mizuno. I'm your host, Ashley McDonald, and I'm joined by Asher Softman. Hello, Asher. Hello. You waited patiently for that? <laughs> I am always so patient. So patient. Uh, Asher is my boyfriend, and this manga is so severely rare and out of print that I don't know anybody else who has it, so I'm making him discuss it with me. <laughs> that's, that's the gist of this one. The, the, the point there is Ashley bought it all. And she can make me read it. Yes, because we live in the same place. Yes. Because we are lovers. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just facts. It's just facts. Yes. I, I'm glad I didn't have to give my introduction this time. I know. I'm, I'm, you should thank me later. <laughs> I can thank you now. Thank okay. you. Great. So yes, so this beginning section about Haruka will try to be devoid of spoilers as best as possible. It's all right. Yeah, <laughs> there, there is some. It's Haruka. I'm not sure that there's what there is to spoil because is there a plot question mark? All right, we're going to get there. Okay, so I'm going to give a plot synopsis apparently. Okay, Haruka. Uh, I will also say that Haruka might be better known as, like legitimately better known as its Japanese name, which is Haruka Naru. Toki no Nakade. So you just know that. Yeah, I do. I'm really filthy like that. <laughs> uh oh, Ganbate. Uh oh. Okay. So Haruka is basically a lesser Fushigi Yugi. That's, that's pretty like okay. I guess I can explain more, but like that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, Haruka is about a girl named Akane who uh, goes back to the Heian era. era the back of the books literally say from high school to Hayen, and it's, like, the best thing about that. <laughs> like, good job, shoujo beat copy people. <laughs> like, I hope you made that up, and it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> but along with her, two of her male friendos also go back to the Hayen, Hayen era. And uh, Akane is a priestess of the dragon god. So the, the four gods are, uh, you know, the, the same as <laughs> are are there. She is not any of their priestess she's like a larger dragon god <laughs> of priestess whom the four are like lesser beings uh so she has to find the eight guardians wow shocking okay so <laughs> basically the celestial warriors in fy the eight guardians are trying to protect the capital like do they ever say any place names they just call it the capital right asher yeah but it's kyoto Oh, yes, right, it's Kyoto. Okay, sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they, they're protecting Kyoto <laughs> from the Demon Clan. And the Demon Clan claims that Kyoto is stolen land from demons. Uh, yeah, that's the whole plot, really. Uh, but really, this is a story about who Akane will be paired up with in the end. Because this manga is based on an Otome game franchi <laughs> franchise. There is an anime as well. So the manga was initially published by Viz in America. I think they published it because the anime was licensed by Bandai at the time. So this, this manga initially ran from uh, 1999 to 2000, 2010. It's 17 volumes long. <laughs> there are two seasons of the anime, but the, the games of, that it is based on are, are not localized in English. So <laughs> we never got that. I would much rather play the games. I'm really curious about the experience. Yeah. Uh, I definitely thought about buying the games because <laughs> they're not very expensive, like on eBay and stuff. But I don't know Japanese, so <laughs> I'm like, how much would I really get out of this? We are doing this primarily because I... I watched the anime initially when it came out, when it was cool, back in 2005. My my prime time of everything, truly. We were literally just discussing this before coming on the podcast. Unrelated to Haruka. It's just that I, I really love 2005. So I used to watch it, and, and even at the time, I was, like, not in love with this anime. I was just like, uh, you know, I'm 15 and have nothing really better to do. So so I'm watching this anime. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Shugi Yugi. Why am I not just rewatching that? I don't know, because I want to watch something new. 
So I, I had a lot of nostalgia for that. And then I guess like two years ago at this point or something, I, I never in my wildest dreams thought that this manga had been localized in English. And then somehow I stumbled across that it was, and I was just like, this is mind blowing. <laughs> like, my mind is blown so far. I was like, this was not good. And like, we never got the, the game. So like, why would you license this? You know, but I, I guess they were just like, oh, the anime came here. So it's pretty big. So we're going to do it. And I was just like, wow, I, I like, so for the past two years, I have aspired to do this manga in particular. <laughs> Did you aspire to talk about this manga or to make me read it? What was your real aspiration? No, no, no. I, yeah, no. It was just to talk about it. Like, okay, I was like, okay. I need to, I need to talk about this manga on the podcast. Like, I know it's stupid and ridiculous and that's exactly why I need to say it. Like, it is, it's my, it's my goal now. And uh, no, yeah, I quickly was like, oh, no, even if I get all of it, how will I ever find anybody who <laughs> owns all of this manga? And then I was like, well, I'll just make Asher read it. It's fine. <laughs> um, before, I, I do want to give a, a larger context of, of this, of the importance of why I think it's actually still kind of important to talk about it, uh, even if it sucks. Uh, <laughs> I do want to get uh, our general opinions of it so far. I'll let you talk now, Asher. How do you I was, do? I was actually like... really impressed. That's the longest time I've heard you talk. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever, yeah. But, like, definitely on this podcast. Mm -hmm. I was not impressed at first. Mm -hmm. Like, I already had really low expectations because, you know, Ashley did me the favor of telling me how bad it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, the, the first volume is complete completely incomprehensible both mm -hmm. story-wise and like art composition wise you cannot tell what's happening from page to page Facts. or even within the page yep <laughs> <laughs> like literally it will change scenes like from panel to panel and you're just like what is happening right <laughs> like, like it'll be a different day yeah like, you're just like you what just have why no am i idea. here <laughs> like, <laughs> and i mean yeah it's no like great shakes even by volume eight volumes eight and nine but I definitely warmed up to it as I went along. Um, I think it helped that more characters... <laughs> this doesn't usually help. More <laughs> characters were introduced. Yeah. But more characters... This you know, is this, is in, this is an Otome game. Yeah. More characters were introduced that were closer to my type. <laughs> so <laughs> that helped. The manga ka started taking a lot of interest in the characters' stories instead of just, I, I don't even know how to describe what she was doing in the first volume. The first volume, I think, must assume that you, like, have so many pre-attachments to this franchise, like, that you played the game. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That you, but it, but it also, it doesn't make sense because, like, the first volume of the manga came out before the they were being the, written simultaneously, they right? Were, like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's entirely the the game is the main focal point of the of the franchise. But but like, just timeline wise, the first volume of like, or, or like the first couple chapters of the manga came out before the game was available. So it's just like, I don't know. Like, it does, it, it makes sense when you're like, yeah, the, the game is the main thing. The manga is a, a supplementary thing for for hardcore fans, right? <laughs> but but just. Otherwise, I'm just like, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at the point I'm at now, I am, I could stop reading and I wouldn't feel a great loss, mm -hmm. but I <laughs> can also keep reading and be like, I am I'm invested in some of these characters. Yeah, yeah. Like volume two is still not amazing, right? Like, uh, but I definitely think by volume two, you're like, okay, at least uh, we're telling like short story. Like for a while, then it starts to tell like short stories about each character or whatever. And you're like, okay, at least we held a story for like 30 pages. <laughs> like that's good. <laughs> yeah. And then volu by volume eight and nine, it's like, oh, this had a whole like the whole volume was about like one thing, <laughs> following all the characters through one plot point. And it's like, wow, the the, the progress we have made is, yeah. is astounding. There was a plot point. <laughs> yeah, there was. First of all, there was plot. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, it held it <laughs> yeah. the entire way. Also, the art does improve. There are also the introduction of characters I don't care about remotely. Remotely. <laughs> Dang, rang. Okay. <laughs> That's but, fair. Yeah. But also, motivations start making more sense. Yeah. Definitely, the, the early going is just, like, 
like you don't understand anything in volume one uh by volume two you're like okay these are cute stories but like why do I care <laughs> like why do I care about these people you don't why do I care about the plot <laughs> quote unquote plot yeah you only really start to care by like volume maybe five <laughs> or something. yeah that's when I started caring and like part of me kind of likes it like uh the story that leads off volume two I actually really like actually partially because I remember it from the anime but, but also because I do think that a lot of the this, this short stories unconnected to like a larger p- plot uh do have this like mythical kind of feel to them like it's just like oh yeah you know in in fairy tales and stuff like you're not in it for characters really in it or anything you're just like there to like learn a fable and it feels more like that and uh i kind of like it but then you remember that it's like nope this is based on an otome game and this is just like some random side quest probably (laughs) and this and like part of the problem with the manga too is that uh it's written by the person who i think primarily was supposed to be like the character designer like her main manga credential is hard (laughs) uh it was definitely her first big thing and it's just like oh it shows like <laughs> let's be clear yeah yeah no i think i think even watching the anime i i had a similar thing where i was just like you know a lot of like there's so much stuff that like is so meh or that i just like don't like but then the things that i do like i'm like that is intriguing enough to like keep going you know <laughs> like it's a, yeah it's intriguing enough to, ch- to try <laughs> basically so why why are we doing this very meh series? Why why was I so excited aside from nostalgia? Like I, again, I do actually think it was important to like the history. Like I am by no means certainly not an Otome game scholar. Like I have never played an Otome game, <laughs> shoujo manga. Like I'm not a scholar, but I'm like okay, I I can see the broad strokes of you know trends and stuff over the past like thirty years. Uh, so I do think it's important. Uh, I think this this series in particular is, like, an important stepping stone in how we actually got from, like, isekai, like, fushigi-yugi, uh, to today's more modern isekai, which is more, uh, like, you know, you know fushigi-yugi is very shoujo, it's, it's uh, actually a girl getting transported to another world, it's very female-oriented, whereas today's isekai is generally more actually like male dominated it's much more about video games like i think that's where the the hardest connection comes in uh it's just that like video games really really uh came and like dominated isekai haruka is actually one of the first uh popular (laughs) otome games it's just legitimately one of the first like very early in the otome game uh background so I, I have some quotes from an anime feminist article about because there's not that much written in English about otome games uh, <laughs> that's available certainly for free on the internet, not in a academic book that probably costs hundreds of dollars. Which don't get me wrong, I aspire to read those books. Don't normally have time to do that. So. An anime feminist article uh, was called "From Princes to Pigeons: A Beginner's Guide to Otome Games." It's by Katie Rendazzo. So some quotes that are. In case you don't know what an Otome game is, <laughs> it literally translates to Maiden's Games. And it, according to this article, is a unique subgenre that bucks male oriented trends found throughout gaming culture at large. These games are narrative based over gameplay based, uh, can be any genre, and are primarily made by female teams with a female audience in mind. Uh, the first Otome game was Koei, uh, Koei Tecmo's Angelique, uh, developed by Ruby Party uh, in 1994. And then, this is according to Wikipedia. According to Wikipedia, the first Japanese Otome game to be officially translated and sold in English was the visual novel Yojin Bo. I can't say stuff. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yojin Bo in 2006 for the PC. Haruka is solidly between those two things, but I think, again, because the anime came over in English and then this manga, I think that it's like, it's like Haruka came over here too early you know like it was it was like maybe foundational in the transition from american audiences not knowing what otome games are to it knowing what the otome games are but like it almost certainly didn't didn't succeed because yeah we had no idea what what otome games are at that point so haruka actually was made by ruby party which is the people that made the first otome game so that's important 
Uh, the first game came out in April 2000. Uh, again, as I said, the manga ran from July 1999 to January of 2010, and is 17 volumes long. Uh, and the anime ran from 2004 to 2005, the peak time of all life. <laughs> 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 yeah, so so basically I just think that it's like a, a very important connection, especially in the English, English audience. Like I have no uh, actual real basis in that other than time and like my exposure to it. But like that is that is my perception of how this works. So I, I do think it's important for us to talk about. I do not think that anyone <laughs> should go to try to find this manga. I cannot recommend that to anyone. <laughs> Both because the first volume is just incomprehensible. Also because it's, it's I spent way too much mo- money on this manga. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> uh, rounding up all 17 volumes was a, a nightmare. <laughs> it took me two years to round up all of them. <laughs> Okay, I don't think I was serious about it until, like, the past year. But it still took me a year to, to be like, yes, I will spend all this money on Haruka. <laughs> uh, it's basically, like, I got the first, like, 12 volumes, I think, for, like, it, its base price, you know? So, like, $10 each, which, like, fine. But after that, it was like, oh, no. I definitely spent, like, $50 on one volume <laughs> at some point. <laughs> don't do that, friendos. Don't, just don't do it. You can legally watch the anime, though. So, like, if, if, if this does interest you at all, uh, you can watch the anime legally on Tubi. Uh, so do that. Uh, I, I can, you know, I'm not going to stop you from doing that. That's fine. I'm not going to stop you from doing anything. I'm just going to highly recommend <laughs> one thing. And as I said, the visual novels never came over in English, but you can, if you do know Japanese and this interests you, you can easily go find some used copies of those. <laughs> They're for, like, playstation 2 and playstation portable though so have fun i don't know i mean i still have a playstation 2 and yeah PlayStation I was gonna be like, yeah you have both of those because things. i love 2005 <laughs> thanks <laughs> okay so now if for some reason you really want to go watch haruka you should stop listening to this because we're gonna spoil things now Although, again, it is only for the first half of the series, so spoilers, question mark, okay. It's also like, I don't know that having anything spoiled is going to change yeah, the right? enjoyment or non-enjoyment of this really series. It's really a character-based uh, thing, so either you like the characters or you don't, and right. that's kind of the point, <laughs> really, truly. Really, I'm going to make After do a lot of this character walkthrough, so we're going to start with, the, there are a lot of characters. There are a lot of characters. Okay. Oh, I'm just going now. So, well, okay, so we're gonna. I tried to break it down into logical things, which was I, I put it as our, our people who are from the present day who get transported back in time, mm-hmm. then the Kyoto capital peeps from the Heian era, and then their demon clan adversaries. But obviously, we should talk about our lovely, lovely uh, protagonist priestess girl, Akane, first. All right, so. There are a lot of characters here, and they all have really weird names, so we're going to pronounce all of them wrong. Oh, there are definitely some. I'm and, super wrong. <laughs> and Ashley and I are going to disagree on a lot of pronunciations, probably, so just Okay, we should deal. add the caveat that Viz could not figure out how to spell some of their names. Like, from <laughs> volume to volume, some of the, the name uh, spellings change, so can you blame me? Can you? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Ashley keeps calling her Akane. I would call that Akane because I grew up on Ranma one half. I'm trying very hard to pronounce it correctly. Is Akane correct? I don't know. I just think in Japanese you're not supposed to put emphasis on any right. one. But when you say Akane, the emphasis is going on the first syllable. Akane? Yeah. I don't know, man. Whatever. I'm just going to do Akane because I watched so much Ranma. You don't even know how much well, Ranma I watched. Well, in the way that you're dubbed. saying it. Wait. Akane, yeah, I'm Akane putting it on the second on syllable. The ka, yeah, yeah, yeah I assume that's wrong. Sure, probably. whatever, you can do it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean... I always pronounce stuff wrong on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, like, we are saying it differently, but it's the no, same person. No, that happens a lot on this podcast, I think, actually. Because uh, I don't like the politics of people being like, you said it wrong, so you're not a real fan or whatever. So, like, if people who are guests on this podcast, like, if we don't agree, I just never point it out. Like, as long as we, everybody understands okay, okay. who it is, like, who cares? <laughs> well, anyway, no one can contact me, so I'm going to keep calling her Akane. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably start doing it, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever. Great. So, yeah, she's 
boring. Oh, we're walkthroughing. We're explaining who they are. She's boring. <laughs> I mean, that's a fact. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so she's, you know, your essential high school girl. Well, who... <laughs> the problem with Akane is that she's, the, even the mangaka at one point was just like, I didn't expect uh, for Akane to have no personality traits, based, like very little personality traits to go with. And it's like, yeah, like this is absolutely the problem of it being an, an Otome game right. uh, adaptation. Yeah, it's a first person yeah, yeah, viewpoint like, yeah, game, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so technically, she is meant to be this cipher who stands in for any beautiful Otome, any beautiful maiden playing this game and lusting over all these men and boys. And as a result, she makes no sense. <laughs> she has no personality. Yeah. Except being She starts... Nice. She does start having a personality. Yeah. Which, I, which is like, why it's like, it's such a slow burn, you guys. <laughs> it's such a slow burn. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, she's like inoffensive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfectly inoffensive. But like, boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 kind of annoying. Partially she only starts having a personality because somebody else like impersonated her <laughs> so ne- so she had to the mangaka had to come up with a way yeah, to differentiate yeah, exactly them. <laughs> like she, it was like well look at how much personality like look at how a personality differs compared to this demon girl <laughs> you know <laughs> sure the one thing i do appreciate about akane is as of volume nine she displays no preference for any of her guardians and i think that's beautiful <laughs> It's true. It's, a, it's, it's very much like a, you as people who reading it probably almost certainly have your favorite boy toys in this, uh, but Akane just uh, doesn't care. She loves them all. Yeah, she's just like, oh, you're cute. Oh, you're cute too. Oh, like, you're so strong. Aww. Oh, I really admire you. Yeah. <laughs> and then like they try to say something like, hey, I kind of like you. And she's like, that's nice. <laughs> Go get your wounds treated. Yeah, she's like, I don't want to talk about that. (laughs) It is pretty great. I appreciate it. That's that's all there is to say about Akane. Yeah. Uh, She's only interested, she's truly only interesting in relation to other people. (laughs) Really, like... And it's not her fault. It is. This is This is what we have to work with. This is early Otome game land. They didn't know what they were doing, man. They didn't know. I didn't know it, 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 it tried okay <laughs> it, it brought us better things in the end i guess mm-hmm. uh one of her most heated uh <laughs> the suitors <laughs> is tenma 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 is a year older than her i think but he's in her grade because he was held back a year <laughs> oh, yeah. tenma is your motorcycle riding delinquent boy he is from present day he has a tattoo and everything he does mm-hmm he's a little badass. He's a criminal. He's a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't actually think about that until just mm-hmm. now. I was like, oh, wait. He's, like, legit probably he's a criminal. He's part of the Yakuza. <laughs> well, no, he's probably too young for that. Oh. Is he just part he's of some pro- He's in a gang? biker gang. Yeah, but, like, just- you know, that's... No, that's the, the gateway to becoming and getting yeah, yeah, into yeah, the he's Yakuza. He's working on it. He's yeah. working on it. God. <laughs> Wow, Akane, now, now, now Akane strikes me as very interesting, just because, like, her choice in friends. Her hmm. choice in friends is great, yeah, no. Yeah. Again, she's only interesting in relation to other people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Tenma, if you've read Fruits Basket or watched Fruits Basket, Tenma is basically inferior Kyo. Yep, no, 100%. He's temperamental he's very impulsive he loves akane and the one thing i will um you know commend him for is like volume two he'll he just was it volume two <laughs> <laughs> volume two he's like akane i like you actually i think he said i love you he i think he I went you. there he went there he went there. he went there and you know what good for you good for you tenma <laughs> speed this up tenma speed yeah. this up <laughs> He is the, oh god, what is he? He's the Azure Dragon of Earth. Oh god, I definitely don't remember all this stuff. You might want to grab me one of the books so I can make sure I'm getting all of them right, but I know he's the Azure Dragon of Earth. So he's... Bring our stack of books over He's Seiryu of Earth. What else is there to say? He, you know, tried to save Akane from getting pulled into the well. We didn't talk about how she fell into a well, so you can thank Haruka for Inuyasha. Yep, Inuyasha is basically... Every anime that you know, 
Haruka is just the inferior version of that. <laughs> <laughs> She's not wrong. That's really all there is to say about Tenma, well, too. I th- no. Oh, I think Ashley, Ashley, Tenma I, is her favorite. It's true. I used to be... No, I think now I like some of the others more than I did. <gasps> but Tenma, definitely, traditionally, Ashley's favorite, for sure. <laughs> no, uh, watching the anime, I was like, Tenma. Oh, you know the other thing that made me really addicted to the anime is it has a dope-ass theme song. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the, first, the, op- the first OP, so good. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> uh... Ten, yeah, Tenma, also... I, oh, I, I forgot to mention, like, his important character thing, which is, like, the reason yeah, he's yeah, yeah. all, like, tough and angry and protective is uh, his sister went missing three years ago. Dun, dun, dun. We'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's important also to note that Tenma is the driving force betwi- behind, like, He's, like, the driving force of all the romance in this. Like, he goes <laughs> all the other Guardians <laughs> all of the time. He's, like... He's like, oh, you're a Hisa. No. The samurai boy, you cannot like Akane. <laughs> Which is crazy because he has no reason to believe you're a Hisa has any feelings exactly. for Akane. He has no re- <laughs> He has very little reason to believe any of these people love her. And then he's just like, <laughs> And then they're like, but did Tenma see something I didn't? Yeah, they're like, wait a minute. Do I? And then it's like, Tenma, you're shooting yourself in the foot, my butt. <laughs> Which is, you can say that about everything Tenma does. Oh, Tenma. He's trying. He's very try hard. He boy. tries very, very hard. Yeah. I was also just going to say that, uh, in addition, like, he absolutely just, like, looks like an inferior Kyo, too. From, oh, yeah. From, no. he, has, he has orange hair and everything. He's the fiery one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then there's. His, his hair is actually probably not natural. Oh, that's true. <laughs> he's like actually a Yankee. <laughs> yep. Tenma. He's a bad, bad boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but with a heart of gold, so it's all good. Duh. Okay. Okay. Asher's very much not into Tenma. No, anyway, I'm not. how you feel about Shimon? I'm not like super into Shimon either. So Shimon is a middle schooler. Shimon is a quarter. Yeah, his grandfather European? is French. French. So he has, naturally, because this is how genetics work, Mm -hmm. um, curly blonde hair and blue eyes, which makes, which is the defining characteristic in this manga of the demon clan. So he gets faced with a lot of uh, racism. Yeah, both in, uh, so in, in, when they're in present day, he gets bullied because people are like, oh, look at this blonde haired, blue eyed, but Japanese kid. Uh, so they bully him, and then he goes to the hater, and they're like, oh my god, he's a demon. So he just faces racism, like, all over the place. And I know yeah. we're not supposed to say that about, like, blonde-haired, blue-eyed people, but like, that's, all, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. Like, it makes sense in his context. This is racism as a blonde-haired, blue-eyed kid would experience in Japan. Like, mm-hmm. that's just facts. Mm-hmm. He comes off as timid and people-pleasing. It comes out a little later that, like, he does that on purpose, basically. Like, he knows what he wants out of life, and this is how he's going to get it. And it's not... It's not not genuine. Yeah, yeah. He is a nice person. He's a good boy. But, you know, he's also not... He's not the shrinking violet of this group of eight boys. Men. Boys to men. Boys <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would note that he's basically PETA. He's inferior PETA from The Hungry. He wants to be a pastry chef. Oh, yeah. He's blonde hair and blue-eyed. Yeah. He's timid and nice. PETA's not timid. Yeah, I said he's inferior PETA. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> because as with everything, everything is just inferior yeah. to everything else in Haruka. Right. He's very sweet and cute, and like that's his whole like personality. That's his whole thing, but like he is... I think that he is the, like, catalyst for most of the more interesting story points in this The plot stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, because he is so reviled and between, because he's one of the Guardians, but then he's also uh, mistaken for a demon. Like, he is one of the people that, you know, makes all the characters have to confront, like, why they're really fighting for anything. Right? Like, uh, yeah. And on the Guardian note, he is the Scarlet Phoenix of the Earth. So he's Suzaku of the Earth. Suzaku of the Earth. (laughs) Woo. Woo. (laughs) I think Asher is way more intrigued by these things than I am. Yeah. Well, I think they'll be more important in the second half. 
They will probably because now we're getting into that plot stuff in the second half. Yeah. It also helps me just like keep track of what they're supposed to be. Like which connections are supposed to be important among the eight of them or nine of them, including Akane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that matters. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, there's, you know, there's one of, oh God, there's two of each, basically. There's four mythical beasts mm-hmm. and there's eight guardians. So there's like a Suzaku of heaven and a Suzaku of earth. Yeah. And I don't know why. I think it's so that they could maximize their you know, hot guy archetypes. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Almost definitely. Yes. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem, it, so far it hasn't had much bearing on the story. Yeah, we've only gotten to a point where they're like, this matters because we have to collect uh, the scroll things. The talismans. <laughs> yeah, the talismans. Yeah. Uh, we have to go collect them. We have to do it in pairs of twos. Right. Uh, so yeah. it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. sure. And I've also always liked the four beasts. Like, they come up in a lot of literature. A lot of things. They came up in Digimon, so like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they will still always be Fushigi to me, but I know to me they're actually Yu Yu Hakusho. That's my dirty secret. <laughs> that's my filthy dirty <laughs> secret. <laughs> oh dang! All right, well that's fair. Uh, but yeah, no Shimon. I do not like like Shimon himself, but I do like what he does for the story because he is the story basically. <laughs> like he is the only. Like, he is not the story, but he is the only thing that makes any of them have to be, like, like, you know, they all hate him, and then they're like, why do we hate him? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, they're like, oh, should I not hate him? <laughs> like, maybe. Yeah. He's very hard to hate. Yeah. He's I mean, he's very though. annoying. <laughs> oh, that's mean. He's annoying from, a, like, a reader standpoint. Okay. Because he doesn't, he's annoying in the same way that Akane's annoying. Yeah. Well, they both hang out all the time. Yeah. They're like, they're the ones that everybody else is like, no, you sit here and look pretty. Yeah. And we will do this. You stay inside. Yeah, you stay inside. <laughs> and then the only other present day peep is Ran. Yeah. I like her. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Ran is Tenma's sister, the one who's been missing for three years. She was pulled back in time to the Heian era three years ago. And uh, she had a bad time. She had a bad time. <laughs> So she was pulled through in the hopes that she would be the dragon priestess, but she was not chosen, and she became instead the priestess of the black dragon, which is not really, like, explained. No. <laughs> no. It's not. It's, it's like, why are there two dragons? And like, oh. <laughs> anyway, like, those three years were very isolating and traumatizing for her, and she, like, hates everybody for a couple couple volumes but they beat her like instantly yeah <laughs> <laughs> so they beat her and they capture her and like rehabilitate her in <laughs> in, in some other palace. palace yeah yeah in uh yasuaki's mentors whatever or the person who made him whatever yeah, spoilers. spoilers and then by the end she's like normal yeah she she crushes on one of the guardians in yeah. particular it's pretty great ron is definitely uh one of those people who's like, okay, again, you make the story interesting by making our bland characters actually have to, like, think about how bland they are almost, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, or, like, you know, wrestle with complicated issues of what the right thing to do is or yeah. how to be supportive. Also, I think she's just, she's just, she's my favorite of the present day group. Yeah? Yeah. Because, I mean, Tenma's hard for me because it's like, He's just so angry all the time, and there's not always, like, good underlying justification. <laughs> Ron, like, when she's angry, you know why. Because oh, yeah. she she's has, messed up. She has legitimate reasons. Yeah, and, you know, and she's, her feelings end up being, like, she has a more complex range than Tenma does, I feel. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing that I, that I was like, oh, we're finally getting to some some, like, core, like, real struggle in this manga was when, you know, like, Ron and Akane only talk a couple times, actually, really. But there's one point where, you know, she, she's ranting at Akane because she's, like, so mad. She's like, you know, I wanted to be uh, chosen. Like, I wanted to be special. And she's like, but, but you were chosen by the, dra- the, the white dragon god or whatever. Uh, I was just controlled by the, the black dragon. And I was like, oh, we're finally getting somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, <we're> fin- <laughs> yeah. They actually didn't resolve that at all. No. There's no resolution to that. <laughs> there's nothing. There's, uh, yeah, because it's just like, 
that's that's what's infuriating about this manga is that it's, it's like it, oh it, it drops something uh actually intriguing and then it's just like i'm just gonna keep this pause this here and we're gonna go to something else and it's yeah. like why <laughs> why can't we just keep going with the interesting thing for a hot second <laughs> no because we have to like we can't spend all this time on ron and akane where are the men where are the men folk <laughs> where is tomomasa and his beautiful beautiful hair oh god okay yes so let's get into all these other guardian uh, and capital otherwise important capital peeps yes Starting. I tried to put it in order of how we were introduced to them, but it might be wrong. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Who cares? It's Haruka. Yeah. <laughs> seems uh, fine. Seems fine. So the first one is Yorihisa. Yorihisa is the first of Akane's guardians, and yet the one we know least about. <laughs> 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 we don't know anything about him. We know he's the youngest child of his family. He's a samurai. He's a samurai. Okay, that's it. That's all we know. He had a new A friend. Yeah, that story was great. <laughs> it didn't actually tell us very much about Yorihisa. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yorihisa, he's quiet. He's quiet. He does funny things sometimes because he's like the straight man to everybody else's crazy <laughs> flamboyant stuff. He seems like really sheltered in a funny way sometimes. Yeah. Like people will say something and he'll be like, he'll take it very seriously. And they're like, wait, that's all right. That's funny. <laughs> We're not going to correct you. <laughs> he is the Azure Dragon of the Heavens. This is when I started paying attention. I was like, ah, oh, he and Tenma have this rivalry because they're both uh, yeah. the dragons. And now they're friends. Mm -hmm. because is Nori and Shimon the two? Are they connected? Of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> then it's, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually, there's not much to say about Yorihisa. Because <laughs> he doesn't say much. It's true. He doesn't talk. He's very loyal. Very loyal. Your, yeah, Yorihisa has, like, I appreciate his loyalty. Yeah. I did like the scene. Kane snuck out for whatever reason, and then they discovered it was, like, a bad day for her to go outside. Uh -huh. And she tells Yorihisa that, and then for some reason they go to, like, Aisen's, uh temple or whatever, and they, like, isolate her in a room. And then she's talking to Yorihisa through the door. That was cute. That was cute. I was yeah. Like, I appreciate this. He's scene. cute. Like, <laughs> you know, he is visually, we should be describing these boys. Oh, visually, <laughs> he is your, you know, tall, we did a good strong. Job on, uh, we, did, we did Shimon and. We did uh, Shimon and Kyo. <laughs> Tenma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I did not know what I said, but I stand by it. <laughs> He's like, yo. <laughs> yeah, so, like, they're, you know, the ones that are her age and modernity and, you know, that's fine. Yorihisa is your tall, strong, mysterious, quiet type. If I would were to compare him to anybody, it would be, you know, Clamp's standard man, <laughs> but with long hair. Long hair, he has a ponytail. He has a ponytail because he's a samurai. You, you, you can't be a samurai without a ponytail. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> He wears some leopard print thing. <laughs> and she talked about how they wouldn't have had leopards in, oh, yeah. in Japan, and she was so funny. And then she's like, what if it was the, the what, the Nui? The Nui's. The, the Nui. And then she was like, but he wouldn't wear his friend. Yeah, and, that, and she's like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense either. And she's like, just go with it. No, the, the historical accuracy is not a thing. It no. It isn't manga. There's also eyeglasses when... No. Yeah, I lost. There were not. not they were not there no. <laughs> in this time. Yeah, he's like I like him. He's definitely the least, uh, yeah, uh, personality. Like uh, he's not flashy, and so there's not much to say about him at this point. Yeah, Tomomasa. Tomomasa. Oh, the smile you have. <laughs> <laughs> Tomomasa is your flirtatious, older, beautiful guy. How old is he? The demon lady called him 30, but I don't think he's actually no, 30. I think he's, he's like 20 something. 20 or something. <laughs> yeah. He might be the oldest of the guardians, though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think so. Like, I think he's older than Takamichi. Tomomasa is, well, first of all, he's Tachibana no Tomomasa. He is a noble, unlike Yorihisa. Yes. Yorihisa is like a, he might have like some standing because he's a samurai and you don't really get to be a samurai if you're a peasant. But Tomomasa, like, is. Is he a minister? He's the general, the major general. Right, right. I don't pay attention to that. Oh, you, stuff. He, Asher's got this like 
of heaven, the dragon of heaven and earth stuff on lock, but then it's like, no. oh, what well, do they call him? He's, the, he's the, the white tiger of <laughs> earth. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, he's Biako of earth. He's got beautiful wavy locks, that, that infuriating half smile. You know, he's the sex appeal of this group. Mm-hmm. And he's a womanizer. Yeah. Well, he kind of is and he kind of isn't. He doesn't chase women. It's women true. chase him. They chase him. And he'll, you know, indulge them and, you know, himself. Yeah. And then, you know, when he's bored, he's like, nope, we broke up. <laughs> I do like Tomomasa. <laughs> I do. Okay. We have very different tastes in men. I know we do. <laughs> I think we actually agree about Asen, though. Maybe. Really? I think so. I thought you didn't like him that much. I like Asen. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. No, the, the the things I like about Tomomasa are the ties he has to, uh, the, and the loyalty he has to the capital and its people and, um, you know, maneuvering things so that they benefit Princess Fuji, the emperor, and, you know, he has a responsibility, he has a responsibility and he takes that seriously. He also, you know, I think he overstates how much he, like, tries to look out for himself. I don't think he actually prioritizes that as much as he says he does. Yeah. I thought there was one point where, like, the other, I forget which character is, but, like, that some characters were like, wait a minute, uh, Tomomasa seems like an easygoing guy, but is it really all just, like, not, not like a ruse, but... But, like, is it not for his own benefit? Is it for everybody yes. else's benefit? And I like that in a character. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I like Tomomasa. Do I like... Age gappy... Age gappy influence? things with him? No! No. I hate that. <laughs> but I also, like... He does not seem to... He has boundaries. Yeah. I don't really feel anything, like, positive or negative towards Tomomasa. Okay. I'm just like, yeah. There. So what what we're finding out is we can divvy up these boys yep. <laughs> and be perfectly happy. Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh no, I think we agree about Yasuaki as well, though. Okay, well, we can share Yasuaki. Who's Yasuaki? <laughs> Yasuaki is. I'm going to s- describe him physically first. He <laughs> the most important aspect of a Notome game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is a younger looking. Man, like a little, I would I would put him a little older than our um, high school crowd, mm-hmm. but not by much. He's very serious faced. He has long, pale hair that he keeps up in a bun with a side bun with a weird ponytail, ponytail thing going down. It's great, and he has a discoloring on half of his face. He is not human. He is not human. It's hasn't been totally explained yet, but he's not human. He has never felt human emotions, but when he saw Akane crying, um, he was like, what is this feeling? I must cry too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he did, he didn't did he? Cry. He did yeah. cry. He's two years old. Yes, he's two. <laughs> That's important to know. It's very important. Um, Talk about some age gaps. <laughs> yeah, really. He is a sorcerer. Basically, if something needs to happen, if, if, if their side needs to do something, Yasuaki does it. It's true. <laughs> Yasuaki is the powerful one in this group. <laughs> yes. Yasuaki is our... He can talk our... to trees. So, I mean... He can talk great. to trees. Yeah. He can make shikigami and barriers and... He does everything. He does everything. He can beat Tenma and Yorihisa in a fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, at once. Mm-hmm. He did um, that. He's great. <laughs> I really like him. <laughs> uh, he's not, like, my top, but he's good. He's good. He's solid. I remember um, really liking him watching the anime. Yeah. He's the type that it's like, oh, I can see why this would have appealed to a young me, and I know why he appeals to me now. He is the, oh gosh, he's the black beast of Earth. Yeah. Genbu of Earth? Yeah, I think so. Let me see. <laughs> yep, yeah, he's Genbu of Earth, because Genbu of Heaven is Asen. Of course they're together, actually. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. If I were to compare him to, you know, to say he's an inferior version of someone else, I would say he is um, Yue from Cardcaptor Sakura. Yue, I think, I think Yasuaki actually has the superior personality. 
but he's stuck in this manga, so, like, he suffers (laughs) from it. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) I just love that Yasuaki at one point literally said, why do humans lie? I can see the priestess's thoughts, but don't understand her motives, and I'm like, yup, that's this whole manga, though, like... (laughs) What? (laughs) Why do people lie, Yasuaki? He has a catchphrase. His catchphrase is, there's no problem. (laughs) I think that's great. He's two years old. (laughs) (laughs) I support Yasuaki and his his learning experience. (laughs) He walks into situations and people are like, oh no! And then he's like, there is no problem. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Yasuaki, what? (laughs) two-year-old problem solver and he's just like well i solved the problem so it's fine now Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh amazing he's amazing i do love him he's great anyway inori inori inori's okay so inori is suzaku of the heavens so the scarlet phoenix of the heavens he is a blacksmith's apprentice and he has um powerful intuition he is also this kind of brash impulsive personality but like less angry than tenma you think he's less angry than tenma? i think tenma is like generally angry all the time uh-huh. like he's just mean sometimes okay inori is generally friendly and loud and boisterous when it comes to the demons he is just completely unreasonable so inori is your young looking spiky haired kid who did i per- compare him to nishinoya yeah, well, Nishinoya is way better than Inori. <laughs> Again, <laughs> like I, I feel like almost in the realm of non-comparison. I think visually they remind me of each other. Okay, too. that's uh, that's fair. I feel like there was someone else Inori reminded me of, but I can't place it. Like so, in something yeah, I watched yeah, exactly. a long time ago. Oh, you know what? It was probably someone in Shigi Yugi, honestly, but I can't think. Like maybe a compilation of different people put together. <laughs> Like, Toski and Chichiri. <laughs> and then aged, aged down to, to immaturity. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. I can see that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, Inori's okay. He's okay. That's how I feel about Inori. He has a sister. I guess sister. I should have done that. I should have been like, who are they in Fushigi? <laughs> <laughs> well, Tenma is, uh, is Toski, I guess. I guess. I actually don't know where I would put Inori. That's probably the hardest one. Hmm. Anyway, go on. <laughs> uh, Inori's whole hatred of the demons like, is because he thinks his sister was deeply hurt by a demon. And we don't know much about that yet, but she does seem to have been involved with one of the big demon bads. She doesn't seem to be hurt by him, though. They seem to well, be... we don't know what happened. They do seem to be involved. They seem to be in love. (laughs) Yes, but we don't know if they're still together. It doesn't seem like they are. They still care about each other, though. Yes, they do still care about each other. He he came to check on her uh, during that execution or whatever. Yeah. 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 But apart from that, Inori's just like, your stand-up good shonen guy. (laughs) That's true. Yeah, he's just absolutely uh, could be a shonen protagonist. (laughs) Yeah. He looks out for the orphan kids over by the Rashomon which is Rajomon in this book because thing people pronounce things differently. Yeah. Asher has feelings. <laughs> it's like so like I actually did a little bit of studying about the Heian period back in college and it's just sort of weird how little that figures into this. <laughs> Yo, it does not care about the I, history. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have anything else to say about Inori. I think I used to like Inori more than I do now. I used to be into all the fiery ones, right? But now I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a little too much. He's a little, yeah, he's a little too too young and, and brash and silly for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, I'm like, again, I do like I do like the uh, rapport he has with Shimon. Like, I do like watching mm. their, their friendship. I thought you were going to say with Tenma. Yeah, like a little bit. But I think I like watching uh, him become friends with Shimon, actually. I wish there was a little more, like of the actual becoming friends process instead of him deciding like well i guess yeah (laughs) it's basically like a shimon is gonna die (laughs) and then he's like oh wait wait, but shimon is a guardian uh okay i guess i don't want shimon to die because you know inori's one of his his part of the camp that's like shimon is a demon he's just deceiving us all and Akane is like, no, he's from my world. He's a guardian. Like, can you please stop calling him a demon? <laughs> like, can you just, can you not? 
Uh, and then eventually he's like, oh, oh, the situation has been forced. My hand has been forced. Like, do, do I want Shimon to die or do I not want him to die? Yeah, and well, just like, oh. the situation has been forced. You put him in that situation. Yeah, you put him in that situation. <laughs> and then he's like, hmm, maybe I don't want him to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I think we haven't, we haven't had the volume about Inori yet, basically. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Takamichi. Takamichi! Your boy. Takamichi. My boy! <laughs> oh man, do I like Takamichi more than I like Asen? Maybe after these, these these last couple of volumes I do. Takamichi is your glasses guy. <laughs> when glasses were not invented yet. Correct. He is also of the same like body type model as oh, he's definitely a clamp character yeah uh, <laughs> as yorihisa and tomamasa he's like a little plainer looking i guess with his glasses on i think he absolutely looks like he like looks like Cloud cho reed <laughs> he does he does look like Cloud reed he also looks like um cho hakai from sayuki that's okay <laughs> i made a blank face <laughs> <laughs> he's like you know he he's not a fighter like they are so he he's now that i've thought he looks like cloud reed i'm like he's cloud he is cloud reed <laughs> you're right but he's not magic either though i know yeah he did, yeah yasuaki is the only one who is magic without his guardian powers yeah the guardians all have powers but but they only they rarely use them they only just started being able to use them i like i love takamichi so <laughs> he's the kind glasses guy he's the team mom he's ignis god <laughs> um he's green coated takamichi's of the heavens he's just a nice guy he works in he works in the government he is like a clerk of some kind but like a high up clerk he probably had a title i don't remember what it is and oh. takamichi is he's just good <laughs> and they like talk about how he's actually very passionate inside, but he co- he like filters it through rationality. Yeah, like he he is actually a person driven by emotions. Like this is what is good and right. This is how I make that happen through the systems I am very well versed in. Uh, he is super diplomacy man. Yes, yes. This is why I love him. And he's uh, a good my, boy. Okay, my favorite Takamichi scene was actually with Shirin, who is one of the demons. Uh, and she's needling him, I guess, like, after she had impersonated uh, Akane. Mm-hmm. And then well, he comes to, like, face her. I guess it's before she, like, wounds him, maybe. I don't before remember. Before she wounds him? No. She no. wounded him at the execution, uh, when they were gonna... Oh, yeah. I guess it's after that, and he's, like... And she's she's mad, because he's not mad at her. But then yeah. eventually he does start get like... He starts getting needled, and she's like, oh, it's so fun. I finally am, like, breaking through your... Yeah, yeah. (laughs) He's definitely, like, the kind of guy where you're like, when you were young, people wanted to bully you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they want to bully you to see how far they have to push you to get a ride. Yeah, and And actually, Tomomasa does bully him a little bit, like, in a friendly way. They're friends. Yeah. They've been friends a while, as far as I can understand. They're government friends. Yeah. Friendos. Friendos. (laughs) Yeah, I, I like that type. I, again, don't really feel one way or the I, other. You can give me Takamichi. You can have Tenma. You can have, you can have Yorihisa, too, if you want. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll split Yasuaki. Right. We have to talk about our, our final one. Aisen. Aisen. This Aisen. is the final guardian. Yeah. Well, actually, Tomomasa was the final guardian. I don't even Tomo want to Masa, talk about like... how stupid that is. <laughs> <laughs> Tomomasa resisted the call for a while yeah Tomomasa <laughs> is like one of the first people you meet and then they keep being like where is the eighth guardian who's the eighth digi destined Aisen <laughs> 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 oh, is the emperor's younger brother from a different mother yeah yep, yep. he's very soft he's the timid one of the whole group He's, like, legit shy and quiet, and he's a monk. He, like, you know, gave up all worldly desires and stuff to go live in a monastery and play his flute. Yep. (laughs) And be pretty. He's the prettiest character, counting all the girls. He looks like a girl. Yes, he's so pretty. (laughs) Uh, he's, He's about Akane's age. 
He's very insecure. He's not confident in his skills, but he's also very kind. He's he's the one associated with the water element. I don't remember all their elements. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. He is the black beast of heaven. So, Genbu of heaven. I adore him. I adore him! <laughs> <laughs> he's trying right. his best. I think, okay, I don't like him, like, I don't look at him and be like, oh, yes, I love you, you know? Like, I'm right. not, like, physically attracted to him. Oh, no, I looked at him and I was like, this one is mine. <laughs> This one looks like a girl. <laughs> yeah. But I do appreciate, you know, like, he has very cute, like, it's clear that Mizuno, the, the mangaka, like, likes, like, yeah. secretly wants him to be with Akane. <laughs> they have very uh, cute, I think they have the cutest scene. Like, I think when he's flustered, it's the cutest, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's also, maybe she just likes drawing him. Oh, maybe. I think the art, made an uptick when he started coming in (laughs) i think i think also it has to do with maybe you know he does have the most like inner conflict about why he shouldn't be with Mm. her being a monk and stuff yeah like legit he's the kind of monk that's not supposed to marry yeah yeah Yeah. uh so there's this like you know uh, strong desire but like very much cannot be fulfilled uh and when we say desire, it's not, like, necessarily anything lewd at all. It's just, like, no. he just really likes her. Yeah. <laughs> She's very, like, you know, you can see why he likes her when, when we see her through him. Yeah. It's like, oh, she's so bright. And, like, you know, they have similar, like, confidence issues. Yeah. Because she's afraid of her power as the dragon priestess. And he's afraid of any power whatsoever <laughs> because he doesn't like conflict. Yeah. But she's like, I want to do my best to help everybody. And he's like, that's so inspiring. And then she's like, I believe in you too. Yeah. And he's like, oh no. <laughs> and it's great. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah. We can share Asen too. Cool. <laughs> Are we just like leaving Inori out in a cardboard box on the street? All right, I'll take Shimon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we've uh, divvied up all, our, all the boys yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> Great. There are some other, like, semi, but I don't feel like Princess Fuji does anything. No, but she's cute. I like her. Yeah. There, are, I think it's more important to just go to the Demon Clan. Yeah. Demon Clan. <laughs> so the Demon Clan are not demons. As far as we can tell, <laughs> there's nothing that doesn't just make them human. <laughs> they are just humans who are blonde with blue eyes and yeah. apparently lived in Kyoto before... They dabble in dark magics, but, like, other than that, there's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they can make they can make vengeful spirits or whatever. Yeah. Or summon vengeful spirits. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, like, a willful, like, yeah, they, they try harder to do these things. Like, it's not like our good people don't do magical things, right? Like, it's just... Yasuaki, yeah, Yasuaki is magic. Yeah, Yasuaki absolutely does. Yeah. Even more magic than any of these demon plan fools. I would, right, I would it's argue. just a different sort. Like he does not, inv- you know, he doesn't call on vengeful spirits. He, yeah, the magic either comes from his environment or from him. I don't know that we have had a treatise on how magic works in nope, this universe. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> yeah, but they like they hatch little rock eggs. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, the demon clan is led by Akron. Yeah. Whom Akane, in the beginning of this manga, was in love with for question mark, question mark, question mark, because, I don't know. <laughs> it's really stupid. It's really stupid. They talk for two seconds. And then she's like, oh, I love him. Yeah, it's weird and creepy. And then he, you know, is like, I'm gonna kill all the humans. And she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. I feel neutral to negative about Akram. Oh, we should describe him. He's tall and blonde. And he wears a mask. Yeah, most of the demons wear a mask. Actually, most of the other three, like, don't really wear a mask. Yeah, it's just him. It's just him. <laughs> um, and not the kind that you're supposed to wear in the coronavirus, like one over his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it would be awesome yeah. if he was a bandit, but he's not. <laughs> yeah, he's boring. His hair is very long. He hasn't been in it. Since, no, like, the first two volumes he's been either. busy taking control of the four beasts. Yeah, yeah, he's just like locked himself in a room and 
messing yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tenma hit him with a sword and he was very hurt and he was like, nope, I'm out of this story. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, his three subordinates have been doing more things, so we'll talk about them. Uh, Shirin. Shirin is Ashley's favorite demon, apparently. No, you like Sephiru better? I might like Sephiru better. Oh, wow. All right. Shirin is demon, the demon I, lady. I like what Shirin does for Takamichi. <laughs> fair. Fair. Yes. Shirin is, you know, the token lady, which comes with all the token lady problems. Yep. Token evil lady, particularly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's actually all there is to her personality so far. Something, you know, drastic happened at the end of this last volume who she is might like the role she plays might change after that she's very you know catty and brash <laughs> brash bold mm. yeah. forward yes <laughs> forward she, she <laughs> definitely wanted takamichi and not just to hurt him she wanted to hurt him but she also wanted him oh she definitely wants she, in she his probably hands. still wants him no for sure <laughs> like... but like in a sex dungeon kind of way yeah yeah no she just like i just want to see this man break <laughs> like so she hundred. definitely does <laughs> no just, yeah, again i i just like what she does for other people like she pushes takamichi like she totally just wants to push all his buttons all the time yeah uh she pretends to be akane for because she wants to get the talismans so she's trying to trick the guardians into like finding them and giving them to her and again i i like the ones that she interacts with like i like what it says about them like how they interact with this different Akane and yeah. whether they pick it up or even if you know even if they do pick it up uh, they still have a like oh did I like this different version you know so I, I, I like seeing her like push them in these in, in these ways <laughs> yeah yeah that's all there is to her yeah if you know Jesse from Team Rocket Jesse. this is inferior Jesse okay yeah I, yeah <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> So the next two are the names that were like... They were spelled differently from volume to volume. They were spelled differently from volume. The worst is Iktidal. I think it should be Iktidal. Iktidal, yes. We're going to call him Icky. <laughs> <laughs> he's not an Icky person. He's not Icky. As far as we can tell. I mean, he's on the evil side. Yes. But he hasn't done anything really super bad. He actually seems like the moderate on the yeah. on the evil side. He seems to want to avoid conflict. Yeah, he's a diplom- diplomacy demon. <laughs> yeah. He has some relation to Inori's sister and he did betray Akram once. But we don't know anything about that. Ooh, is that how he lost his eye? Yeah. It's implied that's how he lost his eye. <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. He uh, he is an older looking man. Well, not old. No, 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 but you can't be old and exist in this manga. He's certainly older than most of the yeah. primary characters. He is. Though. Yeah, he has a mustache. Has That's a how mustache. you know. He definitely is the most visually distinct in both a problematic and kind of refreshing way. <laughs> the whole, like, yes, he's also dark skinned. Yeah, I think in the anime they made him white though. I find that offensive. Uh, I don't like it. Yeah. But he is still blonde. No, I think he has silver hair. That's weird. Okay, well, he's a mystery. He's a mystery. Mystery Osan. He's kind of a fun mystery, though. Yeah. <laughs> I wish he didn't have a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> That's your biggest complaint about it? Yeah. I wish he didn't have a mustache. Yeah, he doesn't appear to have blue eyes either. Yeah, so he definitely has something weird going on with him. <laughs> uh, huh. Okay. But yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't know anything about him. I, I like that he seems to be the active uh, good one on the demon side. Like, he, he does seem to be doing he, where he's some sort of subterfuge right now. To, yeah. I like you, but why is your name Iktidal? <laughs> what? I, the thing I like about him, or the thing I find intriguing, is um, the fact that he betrayed Akram and is still his second in command. It's like, ooh, what is this story? That sounds juicy. Yeah, right? Like, all the juicy stories are still, like, a little bit out of reach still. (laughs) It's like, we better get there. Uh, I'm sure we'll get there soon. It's going to come up whenever Inori's volume is. Okay. Probably. (laughs) Sure. Uh, The final one is Seferu. We're going to call him Selfie. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, it's it's alternately spelled S-E-F-U-R-U or S-E-F-L-E. 
which I can't look at and not read as selfie. Yeah, no, so. totally. <laughs> so call him selfie. Yeah. I don't like him. I like him. That's okay. You can have him. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, he's just, he's, he's trying his best. Uh, he's a brat. He's a brat. Okay. So this is your young looking show, Shota demon with short <laughs> pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so selfie is definitely uh the youngest demon whom you know the other demons just let run around wild well they try to maybe they try to be like selfie stay where we told you stop <laughs> causing trouble he does cause a lot of trouble he's definitely immature in that young selfish way yeah where it's like no I'm going to do this even though they told me not to because I want this one to like me. Yeah. And then when it goes wrong, I'm going to blame this other person over here. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, again, I like uh, seeing his relationship with Shimon. Yeah. No, that that was, like, you know, they're obviously supposed to be foils for each other. Yeah. It's weird to me that, like, there, there are four demons, right? Mm-hmm. Unless Iktidal is something else. <laughs> and two of them so far have clear foils. Mm-hmm. Shirin and Takamichi. Mm-hmm. And Selfie and <laughs> Shimon. <laughs> and I guess Akram's would be Akane's. I guess, yeah. Which doesn't quite fit the pattern, but it's like, it doesn't quite match up. So it's like... Are you saying some guardians are more important than others? If so, why Takamichi and Shimon? Why? Do- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? Or do- does each of the of the demons also like? Is there a demon that's related to Suzaku? Is there a demon that's mm. related to whatever? So far, I am not seeing that yet but like i think it's worth mentioning like inori selfie and shimon all look young yeah they all have this sort of well shimon is not impulsive never mind but they all look young yeah i thought it was like kind of a bone thrown to shimon because he's not really a contender for afghani's heart i feel you know so oh, yeah. it's like uh well maybe we can make him plot important you know that might be the same for takamichi i also don't see him as yeah. a contender for akane yeah I don't think it's trying to be like some guardians are more important than others, but it's kind of definitely like, you know, actually all of them don't feel like they're in play for Akane's heart at this point. Um, yeah. yeah. I would say Yorihisa doesn't feel like he's in play. I think this manga is going to have some other things to say about that eventually. Well, it better hurry up. It better hurry We're up. We're over halfway through. It's true, we are over halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> so, I mean, it's very hard because this manga skips around a lot. The only really big point of, well, first of all, when does Yurahisa sleep? This is the biggest question <laughs> of this manga. No. He just... <laughs> <laughs> just no. He's a demon. <laughs> I think he's not always guarding her it's true that would explain he has, a lot of things he has other samurai under his command this is true they do show that he has other samurai under his command <laughs> and also they always show that akane despite repeated warnings of how she should stay places they always let her wander off and then they're like oh no the demons they came and they captured the akane why did we let this happen <laughs> <laughs> oh no the priestess is stubborn oh no we th- I told her not to wander Yasuaki. I told her not to wander off the path. And then stupid little Tengu. <laughs> I actually feel like I remember Tengu the most. Tengu is some little demon. Yeah, he's what a Tengu. It? Yeah, he's a Tengu. Well, if you wouldn't know what is a Tengu. Oh, a Tengu <laughs> is uh, a race of long-nosed bird-ish people. Yeah. Uh, that usually live up in mountains. I remember Tengu the most from anime, too. My memories of the anime are weird. <laughs> it's because you were young. Young, so young. It's true. It was like 15 years ago. Huh, let's not talk about it. Okay. <laughs> so Yorihisa sleeps apparently sometimes. Question mark, question mark, question mark. The only other big thing to talk about really is uh, that we haven't touched yet is definitely the... Uh, we, we, we touched on it a little bit, but the racial politics of this are just wild. <laughs> yeah, They're just... really, really weird. Yeah, I think you might actually have more to say about this than I do. 
I mean, I also think that there's some entanglement with it, with gender politics, too, with the demons. Because the demons, aside from Akram, like, again, the Sh Sh Shirin and the uh, Selfie are both coded to be more, like, gender neutral. Like, Selfie, or, or Shirin has, like, a very feminine, wily ways, but I think they also try to give her, like, men clothes all the time. So, oh, like, that's she true. She does have uh, some weird coding with her where they're like we, we try mm. to uh yes be some subterfuge here and then selfie is definitely just like oh man you could look at him and be like yeah that's a girl <laughs> you know like that's, yeah yeah that's unclear and i think that's part of why i like him too is that like he's just visually like i'm like what are you what are you doing right we're both usually attracted <laughs> to like not attracted attracted but like we're yeah. drawn to you know characters that display some kind of you know, gender non-normativity. Yeah, yeah. I didn't feel that so much with Shirin, but you do bring up that she was wearing, like, a version of men's clothes. Yeah. Often. Yeah, I... Mm. <laughs> I feel like that's in the the Guardians as well, too, because we've got Aisen. That's true, we do have Aisen. We have Aisen, <laughs> Shimon. Like, Selfie says, you look like a girl, to Shimon. I don't feel it so much with Shimon, though. Shimon doesn't read as feminine to me. Even though he likes pastries? No, I'm so used to PETA liking pastries, and I definitely don't read PETA as feminine. To me, like, every time that hobby comes up, I'm like, are we supposed to read Shimon as, like, Is he gay? girly? Like, he was like, I want us all to stay together, me, Akane, and Tenma. <laughs> That's true, he did say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Interesting. I don't know that if we're supposed to read him as that. I don't think this was written at a time where like we're really supposed to read that into these characters. I also think that it comes more from Shimon's like youngness, yeah, than anything else. Yeah. So like, there's some weird gender stuff there. That, like, it, we knew there was going to be weird gender stuff. It's set in the Heian era. It actually should be weirder with regards to the gender. Ooh. <laughs> I could go on for a while without Heian gender it's <laughs> bad it's bad oh it's, it's bad. real bad oh, that's not fun <laughs> dude <laughs> but yeah this seems to be like a reverse colonizer like uh situation it's very very weird yeah so again they they imply that like the only thing that we know makes a demon is they have blonde hair and blue eyes like that's the only uh distinction they make which is why shimon gets so much crap from everybody the demons claim that they used to own kyoto and that the humans forced them out. And, I mean, I think there's some room for, obviously, like, they're the bad guys. So you always have to question their side of the story. But, like, no, none of the Guardians or anything have disputed this claim. Like, they have not been like, no! <laughs> like, we, no, but nobody did that, <laughs> you know? They just keep being like, yeah, but they're bad. <laughs> like, right. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah what are you talking about <laughs> i think i didn't either i missed it or like i forgot or it maybe wasn't even there but i don't think the we used to live here thing came up for me until later on while i was reading no they definitely said it in the beginning they did okay yeah. then i forgot so i was like oh that makes this much weirder and more unfortunate yeah 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 so then it's just like uh you know, it's definitely a story where the crux of it is, like, how much of it can be done through diplomacy and how much of it can be done through <laughs> we have to, like, punch each other, you know, <laughs> and, and murder each other. Right. There's also implications that this has been going on forever. Though, At least 100 years. Yeah, because yeah. uh, they were, like, the previous Guardians from 100 years ago buried the talisman somewhere. Yeah. We don't know where because <laughs> we didn't inherit, you know, their, their memories or right. whatever. Right, right. And so it's just like, okay, and that's why that's why Shimon is uh, interesting to me, because I feel like he has such a, you know, if Shimon is PETA, and PETA in the Hunger Games is also this, like, he's the one who entirely wants to be diplomacy, like, he's like, please let us not fight, the, like, the least amount of fighting is the best way. And, like, I think, you know, Akane is not at all Katniss, but, like, Katniss <laughs> is, uh, is, like, while, like, uh, you know. Uh, I know so much about the Hunger Games, so I'm sorry. But, like, the, the <laughs> Peter and Gail to the author, Suzanne Collins, are just, like, you know, it's, it's a love triangle, but it's literally her choosing, like, which ideology she, she just subscribes to more, where Gail is more like, no, we have to, like, 
Suzanne Collins is just obsessed with just war theory. Like, is the war justifiable? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer is more complicated than that, which is right, why it's right. good. So yeah, so, she, so Peta in this scheme is just diplomacy. He's like, I don't want to fight. I try the least amount to hurt people. Uh, I think arguably Katniss also does that, but like when push comes to shove, she's like, I'm not dying. You know, she's like, I'm going to kill you before you kill me. And Gail is just straight like, we should be killing them like actively, you know, like we should be attacking. Right. So yeah, so I actually, I admire Shimon because he seems to be the only one like who has a, a stance. <laughs> like he, he's like, even though he's the youngest, he's like, I, diplomacy. Like, I have yeah. chosen diplomacy despite being bullied my entire life. Uh, because. I think yeah, because. Yeah. Uh, which is different than most, like, a lot of stories where it's like, oh, you know, the, the, the trauma is cyclic. So, like, yeah. technically Shimon should be so angry and, like, want to fight back. But he, he's like, no, uh, that doesn't work. But it, it also seems like diplomacy doesn't really work for him either. So it's kind of like. Not yet. Not yet. Poor Shimon. <laughs> like, but we've got Icky. You know, well, we got Icky. He's he's working on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one other thing I wanted to mention was, uh, yeah, Icky had the like the moment where I was like, yes, uh, was Icky was just like even demons need a place to live, and yeah. I was like, you know what, Icky, that's real. <laughs> that's yeah, it's real facts. Yeah. So I, I definitely don't trust this manga to uh, do this well, but uh, I guess we'll find out. We'll see how it goes. I I do want to see what. What is they the do? Conclusion? Yeah, yeah like, I, I, like I don't know that I watched the second season of the anime. Maybe, mm. like, I, 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 yeah, I don't know how anything concludes. <laughs> I guess we should briefly. I'm sure shipping corner next time will be like the biggest much more. Thing. Yeah, to, this time we had to explain all the characters because nobody's read this manga. I know, <laughs> <laughs> for good reason. Next time. <laughs> next time we won't do that we'll probably right. be like how did this end what is this wacky yes and then it'll just be shipping corner it'll just be us just going through each ship for 50 minutes God. but uh i i just want to briefly touch on some stuff so like maybe you disagree with this but who do you think has actually a viable shot with the kane like right now tenma tenma okay asen eh. No, they're cute. Aizen, I don't think Aizen's he has... gonna block his own shot. Yeah, um... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, I, I know I know sports terms. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> See, I feel like you told me that she ends up with someone, and I don't see it yet. So that's the only reason I would consider him. Okay. I mean, I think that they have cute interactions. Sure, but she has cute interactions with all of them. I. My heart goes doki doki when okay, okay. she <laughs> does All right. with him. Okay, fine. I don't see it yet, but I can see where it might build from. You can see how if plot keeps going and the real war comes. Mm, uh, yeah, that could yeah, be good. Yeah. That could be good. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I actually don't feel most of the Guardians have a very strong shot with it. <laughs> yep. I could see each of them being interesting, which is, you know, the point of an Otome game. Yeah, yeah. No. But I don't <laughs> right now in the manga see much of it. Yeah. Only Tenma has made a move. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tenma is, uh, he doesn't mess around, you know? He, he knows what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's going for it. Uh, yep. The, uh, then there was Akane and Akram. No. Ew, no. No, I hated that the second it happened. <laughs> Everybody did, except Akane. <laughs> uh, uh, well, and Akram. Akram probably wasn't too upset about that. I think that he was like, I can use this. <laughs> yeah. Then there's Icky and Nori's sister. Nori's sister. I'm tentatively into it. Yeah. And we like, don't know anything about it. I but that's why it's so intriguing. Yes. Like, tell me more about this. Yes. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know too. I want to know. And uh, I definitely hardcore ship Takamichi and Shiren. I, I can see it. I'm Yonkutsu, into it. You know, whatever. <laughs> like, I won't sue you. I'm filthy trash. I also like Takamichi Tomamasa. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, bring your gay ships, tell me. Yes. Um, I wouldn't want this to actually happen, but Tomomasa and Ron, I support her oh, crush yeah, on him. Oh yeah, Ron is super into Tomomasa. I support that. I support her, you know, dreaming. 
I think the fact that I don't know how old Tomomasa is just makes me very just like leery in general. <laughs> yeah, like, um, put him back. But that one is better than Tomomasa and Fuji. Oh, yes. Princess Fuji, since we didn't really talk about her, is 10. Yes. She acts very grown up, but she's 10. She's 10. No, there are some good guardianships that you could try. Uh, Shimon and Seffel could be interesting. I mean, not right now, but... Ha! Ashley I mean, says no. Maybe. No. If I was going to pair Shimon with somebody, I definitely would make him gay. <laughs> Shimon and Tenma? No! <laughs> and who? Maybe Inori, depending oh, how their friendship right. uh, pans out. Inori, I don't like seeing as a sexual being. He's a little young. They're both young. Wait, you see Shimon as a sexual being, but not Inori? Inori's dumber okay. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no i could get behind takamichi and shirin it would take some doing it's one of those shifts where you're like i know this is wrong but like <laughs> <laughs> i i would read some fan fiction yes exactly <laughs> yeah, okay okay we're on the same page there it's like you just want to read some filthy fanfics about that. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do we want to do predictions or do we just want to be like, that? that's the first half of Haruka? I <laughs> don't. I. You can't tell what's happening as it happens. How can we tell what's happening in the future? It's true. It's true. It could take like some massive plot to this and we'd be like, oh, okay. Akane died and now Ron is the priestess. Oh my God, that would be amazing. <laughs> I would love that. Oh, it's never going to do that, but that would be so dope. <laughs> anyway, for the one person who listened to this podcast, thank you. <laughs> it was probably Asher, too. <laughs> okay. I, I do enjoy listening to the episodes I'm on. Weird. <laughs> anyway. It's like, oh, okay. that's what my voice sounds like. Yeah, I'm always like, oh, that's what my voice well, sounds like. you have to listen to it. Now I don't have somebody else editing. Oh, that's true. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. For the two people who listened to this episode, one of whom is not me. I mean, I did listen to it at some point, probably, but like, <laughs> whatever. Uh, thanks for listening to Shoujo and Tell. Comments, questions, constructive criticism, concerns. Need to gush about your OTP? There's so many to choose from. <laughs> there are. <laughs> Truly. There are. Email Shoujo and Tell at gmail.com or leave a comment on the episode's YouTube page. We're at Shoujo and Tell on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. You cannot find Asher on the internet. I or mean, if you do, like, you're in a weird circle. I mean, he has an archive of our own. I do have an archive of our own. There is no Haruka fan fiction on it. <laughs> I God, I hope not. <laughs> not on mine. Ooh. Oh, now Asher's going to look up some Takamichi Shirin fan fiction. You know it. Awesome. Okay. Are you? I don't think it'll be there, but. Really? On Sh- archive of our own? I don't think so. Oh. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Are you excited every time you see a new episode from us? If so, please consider leaving a rating on Apple Podcasts. This will help the show reach more hearts, or at least ears. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next time for the end of Haruka with volumes 10 to 17. Maybe there will be actual plot and character development. Who knows, really? Stay tuned to find out. I expect zero people to listen to that episode. It's just for me. This is my podcast and you gotta deal with it. Stay tuned until then. Bye.